So good morning, everyone. Welcome to a Brilliant Businesses podcast. My name is Nick Bryant, and I'm very pleased this morning to be with Paul Matthews from Insight Six. Morning, Paul. Morning, Nick. How are you? Fantastic. Great to be here. Yes, it's good to see you. Excuse the Christmas jumper, everyone. I'm uh, I'm fresh from a um, a Christmas breakfast, but um, um, Paul is looking good in his corporate gear. Now, um, now you're a certified CCXP which is a certified customer experience professional. Now, this is quite an exclusive thing, isn't it? Because there's less than 100 of you in the UK. Um, You'll tell us all about that in a minute. Um, But a little bit about your business. Now, you support businesses with customer experience questionnaires, surveys uh, across all sectors and all sorts of other things to help businesses grow. And we're going to get into that. But if we could just go back a little bit, Paul, and just you tell us about how you got into doing what you do. Sure, no yeah. problem at all. Yeah. So my first career, as I call it, was in the health and fitness industry. Okay. So starting off from kind of lifeguard level right through to, in the end, managing large health clubs and uh, leisure facilities. All right. And throughout my career in leisure, I was always, it was always really important that the customer experience was on point. Yeah. The biggest thing in leisure is about consistency of service. So okay. whether it be the changing rooms being clean or the facilities being open. Yeah, right. That's a really important point. So throughout my leisure career, I used mystery shoppers, mystery visitors to make sure that the levels we were providing to our customers were what we thought they were. Yes. Rather than just thinking we knew, actually finding out. And did that for best part of 20 years. Oh, right. Okay. And um, I employed a mystery shopping company to do that and back in 2014 having built up a good relationship with that company I was offered the opportunity to get on board with that business and and that's what happened and so I kind of had got to a point in leisure where I kind of felt like I'd gone as far as I could go yeah and so it was time to do something different and I thought what are the transferable skills that I've got and I've always been passionate about great customer experience I've always been passionate about giving my people feedback yep. and helping them to be better at what they do. Yep. And I found that was a really good tool to be able to manage my people. Yes. So I thought I'd love to open it up to more businesses across Sussex. Yeah. Um, and, th- and that's when I got involved. So it's oh. been, yeah, since uh, January uh, 2015. Yeah, so nearly 10 years. Yeah, it'll be you know? 10 years in January. Well done. I, can't, I, mean, I can't believe it. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's good to hit 10 minutes, let alone 10 <laughs> years these days. So well done. Um, now... Uh, just to give people an idea of how you do things, I recently did the Tumage Wells Business Show and you helped me with the surveys. Um, now, a lot of people on the day told me what they thought of the show and they all loved it. None of them really rarely said anything bad to me mm-hmm. until the next day. Nothing bad, but they would then be honest with what they thought about the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a really powerful tool, isn't it? But you do more than that. Um, yeah. But let's just run through your services. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Uh, just to pick up your point about mm. uh, what you're saying about your show, yeah. it, it's that's a story that we hear a lot. People yeah. don't necessarily hear what they need to hear. They hear the people that shout the loudest, mm. whether that be actually to your face, they tell yeah. you how brilliant something was. Um, yeah. Or whereas when we ask them for feedback independently, they're more honest. And that's more helpful to you. Of course. Because yeah. you can actually then understand what are the things that my customers really want from me? What mm. are the things they really value? And what are the things that they think you could do better yeah and that just empowers you to be able to make those changes and make your business better absolutely yeah um in in terms of our other services uh we as well as the customer client feedback stuff that we do uh we also offer a mystery visit in services and mystery inquiries uh, where we focus more on the prospect inside of things so if you imagine a lot of businesses today spend an awful lot of money on their marketing yeah and, and I've got absolutely no problem with that at all. Yeah. And that's all about driving people to your door, whether that be your website or your physical front door. Yeah. What we tend to see an awful lot is they spend a lot of money on that marketing, but they don't then understand why they're not getting the return on investment for their marketing spend. Mm. Um, and what we see is that that's because those prospect inquiries aren't being handled quite as well as they could be. Yeah. So the part that we play is we help them to understand just what happens when prospect lands on the website yeah makes their web inquiry but the form doesn't land in the inbox of the business yeah, right. or the team member doesn't respond quickly mm. or when they phone up do they actually get dealt with in a way that follows those business processes yeah, yeah so yeah. many businesses will have great processes for handling prospect inquiries but very often their teams for whatever reason aren't following those processes yeah. quite as well as they could be yeah and that means they're missing out on opportunities. I've come so, yeah. so our job is to help them to 
understand where those opportunities might be yeah. so that they can then put in place the relevant training, coaching, guidance in order for that team member to have more chance of converting those prospects into paying customers. Into paying customers, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like I was saying, it's, it's all very well doing a great marketing campaign, but if you're not converting them, it's no good. So that must mean that you have to go in there and you just sit and watch the whole processes and how people do things? Yeah. Um, so we spend a lot of time understanding, well, what does this business do? How do they work? So everything that we do is built completely bespoke to that particular business yeah, yeah. so what I love about my work is that sometimes it's with an attraction so I say like not catch local to here okay a lot yeah. of work with not catch yeah and they're a great family business yeah. uh, and in the afternoon I could be with a top law firm with 15 offices oh, very across varied, the yeah. yeah so mm. it's really eclectic mm. um, but the one thing that all the businesses that we work with have in common is that they put the customer or the client, or the patient, or whatever they call them, yeah. at the centre of their business. Yes. They genuinely want to find out what that experience has been like yeah. and make it better. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, to me, is what all good businesses do. Yeah. They, they understand their customers are the most important thing. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, none of us have a business if we don't have customers. Well, exactly. That's what I'm going to say. It's the most important thing, isn't yeah. it? Really, it has yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, and also customers, and also, I guess, which is also what you but the staff and the way the staff are doing things in the proper way. Absolutely. The, yeah. and, and, and sometimes the, the whole mystery shopping thing can, can get a bit of a bad rap because it can mm. be seen as maybe trying to catch people out. Yeah. And, it, and that's a bit of an outdated view. Right. Really, what this is about is support and guidance and, and enabling people to understand where they can do better and be coached yeah. but also I think more valuable than that having a tangible document that you can use to praise and recognize great performance yeah right. so okay. if you're in my team Nick and you've been mystery at a mystery inquiry yeah. I can sit down with you and have something tangible and say, Nick, great job. Look mm. at the way that this person felt because of the way that you interacted with them and the yeah. things that you did with them that made them feel that we are a great business. Yeah, yeah. And that's really powerful. Yeah, well, you're homing in on the positives, aren't you? Which makes people feel good. Yeah, Especially exactly. staff. You need to you yeah. need to praise them. Yeah. Um, we also do um, staff feedback as well. So right. we don't just focus on customers. We also provide uh, tools for businesses to be able to get feedback from, feedback from their staff, understand how their staff feel about working for them. Yeah. And again, that's a really important part of making your staff feel valued. Because... Yeah. To feel valued is to feel listened to. Completely, yeah. And if yeah. you feel listened to and feel like your views count, you're more engaged, you're more likely to be more productive mm. and therefore provide a better um, better return on investment for your yeah. employer. Yeah, and no, I like that, I like that. I'm intrigued about the mystery shop thing because I was talking to you earlier, you talked about the people that you've got out in the field, if you like. I see all these like private investigators <laughs> everywhere. Uh, this, the, the Clouseau is sort of a sort of approach. Um, but it's not like that. But you, you've got a lot of those out there and they're, they're very, very... Um, they're very well trained, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we've got a team of researchers. So across Sussex, we've got about 75 researchers out in the field. Mm. They're not wearing fake noses and, and glasses. <laughs> it's not like that at all. Yeah. Um, but what they are doing is they are doing the work, you know, and we're incredibly grateful to them. Without them, we wouldn't have a business. Yeah, sure. But each and every one of those is handpicked. They are trained specifically to do the job that we are asking them to do. Yeah. Um, they're, they are... Um, picked because of the credentials that they might have okay. so for the type of work that we're looking for yeah. so we do a lot of work in for example it might be in optical so we've got um, opticians shops that we so we need people with uh, glasses for example yeah, or pets yeah. because we're doing pet shops yeah. etc or certain skills within that industry absolutely yeah. right absolutely so it's mm. really important that they have the right skill sets also we want people that have got great attention to detail mm. you know because it's really important one of the things that we're absolutely passionate about is that the, the feedback that we provide is detailed it's accurate obviously yeah and it is there to help that business to be better yeah so mm. it's got to be absolutely on point yeah. So th yeah, these yeah. these people are, are really important and we have people from students Right. Uh, through to uh, teachers, police yeah. officers who yeah. have got second jobs, through to retired people and everything in between. Yeah. And these are all, they're, they're all part time for you? Like, no, no one's full time doing yeah, this. Yeah, they're all part time. Yeah. They can all work around um, their existing life and, yeah. and, and fit it in as and when required. And, yeah, right. and, and they can choose what jobs they want to do, for, types of work they want to do for yeah. us. So it's nice and varied for them it's as well. It's a cool little job, I think. Yeah. Very it's, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. I'll send you an application yeah. form. <laughs> yeah, I've got. Plenty of time, I'll do that. Um, 
and also let's talk about sectors as well because there's certain sectors that you work better with and stronger with yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, it's fair to say it is is very eclectic in that we uh, work with attractions retailers law firms lots of professional services and yeah. and that often surprises people that oh, okay. you know when they talk about especially mystery inquiries, think, well, what do you do for a law firm? But a law firm is a business just like a, a retailer. Yeah, you know, right. They, they yeah. are still looking to make sure that... I mean, let's take a situation where I'm moving house. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for a firm to help me with my conveyancing. Yeah. I haven't got a particular firm that I've used before, perhaps, or that I've got a good relationship with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make inquiries to two or three firms. Right. That's what we do, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we, yeah. We, we, Ring there's round. so much choice today mm. That, mm. That, we, that that's what we do. So when you do that, you tend to make your decision based on, well, how well have I been treated? It's not necessarily just about the price. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and what we're seeing more and more, that customer experience is the new battleground. It's the, not about price. Yeah, right. It's about the way that we're treated when we engage with these businesses. So true, isn't that it? Absolutely, yeah. actually creates the perception mm. about that brand or mm. that business mm. so i ring up business a and speak to you nick and you give me a great experience yeah i then ring business b and they don't but they're 50 quid cheaper actually i've got more trust and i yeah. like you more yeah the chances are i'm gonna come back to you yeah. because of the connection that you've built so yeah. when we're talking about the types of businesses we work with Businesses like law firms, they're exactly the same. Mm. They need to win that work. Mm. And they do it not, they don't want to do it on price. Nobody wants to be the cheapest. It's not, no, it's not like that anymore, is it? No. I guess it's the same with, with restaurants. You know, they want to be treated well and, and, and looked after and yeah. spoken to nicely. Uh, well, absolutely. Mm. And again, restaurants is a great example where uh, you said earlier about uh, people give feedback about, and they might say to your face that they love it. Yeah. How many times have you been in a restaurant where the server will come over <laughs> and you know exactly what I'm going to say? Yeah. And they'll say to you, How is everything? And yeah. even if it's not okay, you'll still say, Oh, yeah, everything's fine. I'm so bad at that. I right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So it, it's not real feedback, no. it's just what you're being told in the moment. Mm. And the power is really understanding what your customers think about you. Yeah. So that post experience feedback is vital to be able to make the changes yeah. maybe that you need in order to really exceed the expectations of your customers. Yeah. So ultimately that's what customer experience is all about. It's about surpassing expectations. Yeah, yeah. And so do you get a lot of referral work? So one law firm might say, yeah, we do we do a great business with you and then refer you to someone else? Or, Absolutely. So yeah. how you get your business? Absolutely. Yeah. My, my main areas where business come from is number one is referrals yeah. and recommendations. And then secondly, through, through networking, yeah. people that I know or that know of me. I spend very little money on, uh, not because I'm tight, <laughs> uh, just because, you know, actually that's the way I, I want to win work, through doing great work for people yeah them really appreciating and seeing value in what we do yeah and recommending me to somebody else yes I mean, that, that's how i built my business over the last 10 years yeah it's nice when they come to you and, and you, you know you're just doing a good job when they come to you just creating a good thing that people want isn't yeah. it rather than trying to reel them in a little bit um what about areas as well can, can you go all over the country or yeah, yeah. i mean my, my uh, main areas are Sussex and Surrey, yep. but we can uh, and we do have clients all across the UK, okay. including Ireland uh, and, and in Jersey. Yeah, right. So, yeah, we, we have full UK coverage and we have people all over the, the yeah. UK. Okay. Yeah. Are estate agents are a good one for you as well? Yeah, good. we do do work with estate yeah. agents. Yeah. I say that because it, it seems that um, I see a lot of estate agents winning awards mm. because they've been mystery shopped. Yes. Um, and they've won the best um, estate agent in a certain area. Yeah. And again, there's there's different types of awards some of those where the, i love those awards where mm. there's actual mystery inquiries or mystery visits that have happened yeah all too often with business awards it's on the sub on the substance of your application that yeah, the business true. owner has written themselves yes yeah. and i'm always a little bit dubious <laughs> about those ones but like the eastbourne business awards this year mm. where we i was a judge and we were involved in the actual uh, process we mystery shopped the oh you did uh, as well did you list, yes ah, okay. and so that brings an element of realism to yes. those um, awards and that yeah, gives yeah. them extra credence but yeah there's the stay agents um, again another area where we do the post uh, feedback and yeah. we also mystery make mystery inquiries into them as well right okay but anybody yeah. who's got a customer or a client it's any business isn't yeah. it really yeah because everyone has to have customers i can't think of anything that wouldn't work no and we Screen? and because we'd not just b2c we do b2b as well yeah so we can yeah all sectors are uh, a fair game <laughs> yeah, no, I like that. No, I really like it. It's a really cool business model, actually. Is there, is there a lot of people doing what you do? There's not loads. No. I mean, I think uh, what we would say is our 
our USP is that mm. we're not, we've got people on the ground in the locations. So the people that we're using are real customers, real people yep. from the area. Mm. I'm somebody who's passionate about getting on the inside of my clients' businesses yeah. and actually helping them properly to understand the areas that they can improve and the things that they're doing well. Yeah. Uh, it's not done from afar or you no, know, no. remotely. It's yeah. actually we're here in the location. And all across the UK, in all of our Insight 6 offices, we've got people on the ground who are there to help those businesses to provide um, training, guidance, whatever it might be, uh, to their teams and, and to, the, to the business owners themselves. Yeah. Do you, do you, I mean, I'm just shooting from the hip with recruitment companies, whether, because obviously they're, they're recruiting staff all the time, they're, they're talking to, to businesses, getting involved with that in, in a way. Yeah, we've yeah. got, we um, finally mentioned that we have got recruitment agencies who we provide feedback for. So I've got right. one that I can think of where we ask for feedback from candidates that they have placed or not placed okay. about their experience with the recruitment agency yeah. and also with the clients who instruct the recruitment Yeah, both agency. ways, isn't Exactly. It? Mm, so mm. again, and, and we also done a great project with a recruitment agency a couple of years ago where they wanted to understand what their clients thought of them and the perception of their business. Yeah. So it was kind of, and they did some great stuff like if we were a car, brand what yeah. car brand would we be <laughs> I like that, you know yeah. so it, it, yeah. it doesn't have to be the did you have a good experience no. it's much broader than that mm. you know we do research projects on the ground on on the streets asking uh, for um feed not feedback sorry asking them for um the perception of particular brands oh, so right. okay uh, for example do you know who this business is do you yeah. recognize this brand do you know what they do yeah right um, okay. and so that again can going back to what I said earlier about the marketing, that can help those marketing directors, Absolutely. marketing managers to understand what cut through they're getting yeah. in different localities around the, the county. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. In, in Hastings, perhaps, we're not particularly well known. Yeah. Or people recognise the brand but don't know what we do. Yeah. Whereas in Brighton, they're all over us, aren't they? Yeah, I think that, like you said, they recognise the brand, but they, someone could ask them, so do you know this brand? They say, yeah. And they say, do you know we're doing this promotion right now or we're offering this right now? And they go, no. Then mm. they can really control what they do in that area with that promotion, can't they? Exactly right. And we're really specific with it. We always say, don't we, it's a well-known phrase, you know, knowledge is, is power. Yeah. So what we try and help you to do is to understand what people think of you yeah and then you can take that information and you can do whatever you think is right with it yeah and like you'll know from the show you'll have had some feedback that you agree with and you'll make changes you'll yeah. have other feedback that you're like oh, i don't think you know that's a bit unfair yeah or, i'm not going to do anything about that because yeah. actually i've done those things for a reason yeah you're always in control yes I, I often hear when i start talking to businesses they'll say to me Oh, I don't really want to ask for feedback because I'm a bit worried about what I might get back. And I always say to them, you know, asking what people think of your business mm. is always a win-win. Completely. If it's not great, you can intervene and do something about it. Mm. If it's brilliant, you can shout loudly about it. You've got content. You've yeah. got testimonials. Yeah. You've got potentially lead that could lead on to case studies. Yeah. All of this comes from the small acorn of yeah. asking and having a process in place to ask for regular ongoing feedback from your customers. Yeah, it gives you those testimonials. And what I liked about what you did for me was um, when the form came through, they could then click and do a Google review if they had a good experience. I think I got about eight or nine Google reviews out of it. Absolutely. All positive, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, that is exactly right. So mm. part of the thing that businesses often do is they either don't have any, most commonly, they don't have any feedback process in place. Yeah. What they might do is they might say, can you give us a Google review? The, the danger of that is, I always think asking for a review is a bit like saying to your customers, thanks for spending your money with me, now can you find some more people who want to spend some money with yeah. you too? Asking for feedback is very different. Feedback right. says, Nick, as my customer, I care enough about you to ask you about your opinion, what you, yeah, yeah. What you think. Yeah. That says, you're important to me. Yeah. When you then do that, I then will, off the back of that, ask you for, for a Google review or a Trustpilot review, whatever it might be, yeah. based on the back that on based on the back of the fact that you're happy with the experience you've had with us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's two different words: feedback or review. And use the word feedback, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feedback is where it's at. Feedback mm. is about you learning. Feedback is about you understanding your customers. Feedback is about making your customers feel special. Yeah. 
reviews are about saying thanks now help me find some other people yeah and i think also uh, some businesses might think well some people can write some stupid stuff because people do sometimes write stupid stuff you think oh come on that's just i guess that goes back to what you were just saying some things are just you do you either deal with them or you just leave them you know depending you the the power is with you yeah sure you're inviting people Mm. to tell you what they think Mm. you choose what you do what's important is that you cl- what we say what we call close the loop yeah so you should always i would always say to people always acknowledge the feedback yeah always go back to your customers and talk to them about the feedback that they've given and make yeah. sure that they know that it's received yeah uh, and we have systems that can do that automatically if you okay. want to or you can do it individually yeah but that's an important part of it, closing the loop. But then ultimately, what you do with that feedback is entirely up to yeah, you. Sure, you. Yeah, sure. You can yeah. choose to do nothing. Yeah. You can choose to say, well, that would be lovely, but I can't afford it right now. Mm. But it's something, you know, a list of things that I might do yeah. further down the line. Or you can go, God, how silly of me. Why don't I do that? Yeah. What a great bit of insight. Yeah. I'll start doing that now. I think also, what, when you were saying there, I think, how... Um, powerful is it that someone writes some good feedback and you call them up and, and thank them um, for that or, or they say something that's a, that, that can help your business and you also ring them and thank them yeah. um, for, for giving you that and that's powerful isn't it a- absolutely yeah. And, yeah. and again it's the perception that mm. it creates mm. of your business in that customer's mind yeah. you know um, experiences are built out of memories yes so, the memory that we have based on the perception that we create is really important. So, I know, for example, let's. I've got a story where um, mm. I often tell about Sky. Okay. We moved house and uh, we move, and I have an office at home. Yeah. So the internet is pretty important to me. Sure. My yeah. broadband, etc. Moved house, moved in, and the broadband wasn't great. Mm. After we moved in, we got a survey come through from Sky asking us about the experience. And I was honest and I told them that the engineer was lovely, but I was struggling with my broadband speeds and as I ran a business from home, this was really important to me. The next day, I get a call from an agent at Sky. Well, first of all, I was surprised that they didn't read the feedback, but that's great. Um, Offering me an upgrade to my package for free for three months. So I got faster broadband, a couple of extra things on the TV. I thought, what a great example of them asking for feedback, but mm. then more importantly, acting on it and using it. Mm. So I had that package for three months for free. Yeah, right. What happened at the end of that three months? It went up another 20 quid a month. Guess mm. what? Three years, in fact, three years today, yes. since we moved into that house, I'm still paying that extra amount. Yeah. So not only did they make me feel special by solving my problem, by listening and solving my problem, mm. they actually gained more money from me, yeah, in, yeah. increased business because from me. Because you're completely satisfied. Yeah, because mm. they asked me, they they listened, mm. and now they've made it right for me. Yeah. If they hadn't have done that, perhaps I would have started looking at other providers yeah. for my, You'd have done my the ring services. Round, you? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly right. What a great story. And uh, that's really good. And that sort of that sort of homes in on how you can help businesses with that process. It's as simple as that, isn't it? It, it really is. Yeah. Understanding what your customers think about you, mm. how they feel about you, more importantly, mm. and what things you can do to either improve that experience yeah. or, if they're happy, that's a great thing to know. Yes. You know. If they're happy and they're sharing positive feedback with you, yeah. well, that's stuff you want to be sharing with other people. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whether that be, even if they don't leave you reviews, that's a testimonial that you can pop on your website. Mm. And again, mm. top tip with uh, websites if you get a testimonial, and you put it on your website, always date it. Okay. Because yeah. people want to know that this is true recent. now. Yes, you of know, course. How many businesses do we know where they've got testimonials on their website and they're probably five or ten years old? That's true. Yeah. Whereas if you say, you know, it's, now, yeah. 2024, yeah. then, well, that says to the, your pros- prospective customers that... You're doing a good job now. now. Yeah. Mm. Good idea. That's a good tip. Um, talking to websites, so keep, people can get through hold of you through your website. Is it insight6.com yeah. or something? Insight6.com, that's yeah. right. Okay, um, so any businesses out there that really would like to use Paul services? Because uh, they, they, they're they really, really powerful. And I think it, what Paul does gets overlooked a lot. Mm. Um, and I think it's a, a part of a business which is almost like a stable part. It needs to be done. Um, well, we would yeah. say so, Nick. I mm. think it is vital, you know, putting the customer first, mm. making sure that you're understanding how they feel about your business is, is really important. And yeah. more to the point to give you ways in which you can 
you can change direction if you need to. Yeah, 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 and no, I like that. So um, please get in touch with Paul if you need his services. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you and give you advice and, um, on anything that he can help you with in your business. Um, thanks again, Paul. That was really interesting. I know, I know you and I know some of you about your business, but I don't know everything and I've learned a lot today. So that helps me refer you as well. So Good. Thanks a lot and thanks for joining us and we'll see you all for another podcast soon. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Cheers. Thank you.